Hi, hope you guys are doing well. So today we'll be doing this Digivolution animation uh, because this one was a child was my favorite, uh, so that's why I thought of making an animation related to it. So we'll be doing a step by step breakdown of the tutorial as well as some uh, direct you know one on one tutorial. So the first thing I think I'll just tell you about it in the bottom ring over here. It's actually from CG Patrick's tutorial of a procedural hoodoo design in Blender if you want it. He actually used multiple versions of it. I only used one big one. Because I actually only uh, felt uh, that was needed, so I'll leave a link to this in the description, and you can actually create this uh, bottom base circular thing, uh, or whatever it's called over here. So, uh, so I'll, I'll leave a link to it in the description, so you can follow the tutorial to create them. And I actually just use one disk here, use multiple disks. So uh, now for the next part. Uh, I'll also leave a link to this in the description below. So uh, if you actually go to this website called uh, the models resource. I'll leave a link to the uh, Agumon and Greymon models in the description below. You can search any other models if you actually want to. There are loads of Digimon models. So if you actually want to use some other uh, model to, uh, to create the division process, you can use them for yourself. So um, yes, I'll actually leave a link to them in the description below. Uh, the rest is up to you. If you want to use some other Digimon for the process, uh, your model welcome to do it. So let's get started on the uh, next part. So uh, I already told you the version part and the um, you know models. So now I'll actually just uh, set up the scene first. Click on seven to go to top view. Select this light and G to move it on this side over here. Then shift T G X to move it on this side. Okay, and then sh shift select both of them and then shift D G Y to move them both above. Okay, so now we have lights on all four sides of our scene. I think these two are. This should be a little bit of more on the side. And now shift select all of the lights because these lights are on the top and uh, this bottom part will look too shadowy and I don't want that. So shift D, G, Z and move it about over here. Yes, this actually looks good enough. Now uh, as for, for the camera, select it and click on Alt G and Alt R to reset all its location rotation premises. So change the rotation on X axis as 90. Okay, and then uh, G Y to move it a little bit of backward. Now I'm going to import the models file. Import dot obj. Okay, mines are in desktop. They are probably in your downloads. So um, just search for them and import the models. So I actually downloaded the Agumon Classic model, and I'll also um, import the Greymon model. It's called also the Greymon Classic models. Or maybe you think the master's model, I don't know. I'll just leave a link to it in the description. So, as you can see, that the Agumon and Greymon model are actually a lot similar in size. I actually want Greymon to be a bigger to you know show the size variation. So, I'll go into Wi Fi mode, and now I can see that the Agumon model is so I'll just scale the Greymon model to be about this big. So, this actually shows a really good height difference for both of them. So now let's go back into solid mode. Click on zero to go into camera view. Select the camera, and I'll we'll just move it above on the z-axis, axis because on the start of our animation, our main focus is Agumon, not Greymon. So I'll just hide Greymon for now, and over here now Agumon is our main focus. And for now, uh, on the start of the animation, it's actually good enough because we can see the Agumon. Okay, now select the um, select Agumon, and click on ta tab. And let's just show, let's just show you the problem in the right view because the eyes are actually closed and we don't want the closed eyes. So I'll just go back in edit mode and deselect everything and click on L while selecting uh, while having your mouse over its eye. Click on L, then go to, to the other eye and then hover your mouse over it and click on L and then just scale it. Come out of edit mode and you can see that uh, the eyes are visible again because uh, we directly didn't need this, uh, those faces. Okay, those are extra faces. So the animation starts with Agumon rotating twice. On the z-axis, and then uh, it becoming invisible on about two seconds. Okay, so I'm actually going with. Um, okay, I'll just show you my settings before. Uh, we have to turn on Bloom. The world settings set the world color to black. Black, and also the FPS uh, for this animation is going to be 24. So basically, 24 frames it will be one second, and 48 frames will be two seconds. So on 48 frames, uh, in other words, two seconds, a one completely disappears and actually goes through two rotations. Okay, so. Click on the let's I'll just go into camera view. So on frame one, I'll I have the Agumon model selected. So on its rotation, I'll click on I, okay, I to on frame one to give it a keyframe, and then I'll actually go to frame 48, and on the Z axis, I'll give it a 720. 720 means two uh, two 360 rotations. So that means it will be going to two rotations during this, and I'll click on I again. 
to confirm this i'll just move it around as you can see agumon is rotating twice twice completely around its own axis during 48 uh, 14 seconds of animation Greymon on the other hand is actually different Greymon actually is going to start rotating from frame 48 because it's going to start becoming visible from that on time point on so on frame 48 click on uh, while having Raymond selected on this rotation click on I and I actually just want it to, to be small so I'll go into uh, click on 72 72 that means one more second will pass but and Raymond will only rotate once on 360 degree okay and then I'll click on I again so basically it's going to be like this okay and then the final during the final pose um, I actually want Raymond to rotate again so I'll add half a second in other words plus 12 frames so on it frame 84, frame 1 will rotate a little bit more to about like this angle. Let's just make it for 110 degree angle and I'll I to add in another keyframe. And then um, I'll add plus 12 more seconds. So the total animation will last 96 seconds. I actually increased the uh, duration of the uh, animation during post production. So um, yes, you can actually do that. But uh, for now, you can actually increase the duration if you want to. But I'll just go with this one to, to keep it short and simple because, you know, so this is how they're going to be rotating. Okay, so now um, I'll hide, hide Greymon again. And let's just go, go with Agumon. So now we're going to be creating the material from the looks of the animation. I think you guys have already figured out that the same material has been used for both of them. The same node setup has been used for them. Aside from the fact that Greymon actually has particles around it. So we'll be coming that later on. So uh, yes, um, uh, let's just get started with the new setup and then first we'll create it for Agumon and then we will um, uh, copy that and uh, adjust, it, adjust it for Greymon. Okay, so we'll create a new collection and um, this is going to be um, Let's just uh, click on Shift A, empty. Okay, we'll need to empty, and I'll create a cube G Z to move it above Agumon, and I'll name it M. I'll name it empty A for Agumon empty. Okay, so, uh, and uh, empty for Agumon, and then Shift A, empty, and uh, we'll go with a sphere, and then G Z to move it down, and I'll call this empty G for uh, uh, empty Greymon. Okay, G for Greymon, A for Agumon. So actually, uh, help me understand it easily. So now that's done. Click on Agumon, go into the shader editor, okay, and um, in the blend mode, go into blend mode and change the shaders blend mode to alpha clip and shadow mode to alpha clip as well. The good thing is we already have the textures, so we actually don't have to work that hard on the textures part, but we will have to work on the uh, shader itself. So uh, I actually want to add in a hue saturation node in between just to, because uh, when the effect starts taking place, the shaders start to look a little bit of dull, so the hue saturations will actually uh, keep that in check. Okay, so let's get started. Shift A, okay, Shift A to actually call this menu. Shift A, click on search. I will always do that and add in a mix shader. Okay, we're going to be using mix shader a lot in this one. So mix shader one, Shift D duplicated and then Shift D duplicated again. We're going to be using just three of these guys. So the mix shader plug it into the uh, surface and the principal BSGF will be plugged into this first mix shader stop part. And again, we'll be plugged into the bottom uh, bottom part of the third mix shader. Okay. Now we also need, uh, and this mix shader, the third one is going to be plugged into the uh, lower part of the uh, second mix shader, and the second mix shader is going to be plugged into the lower part of the first mix shader. Okay. And um, we'll also need a transparent BSCF. Okay, transparent, not translucent. Don't mix that up. It's transparent, and plug it into the shader. Now we also need a color ramp, shift A, color ramp, plug it into the uh, first effect of the first mix shader, then click on a shift D to duplicate it and place it about over here, make the black part go about half of it, okay, and the white part go over here, about over here about over here and the color of this color ramp is going to be in the factor of both of the second and uh, third color ramps and now we're going to be needing an emission shader emission and this emission is going to be plugged into this uh, third mix shader uh, increase the emission strength to about 200 
and um, the color actually doesn't matter right now because we're going to be adding other nodes and uh, yeah that's why it doesn't matter so shift D and duplicate this color ramp again add it to the uh, emission shader this is why the color didn't matter and now we have to change this emission shader color to uh, match sort of the color scheme of grima uh, augment so orange color is what usually is uh, used for this transformation so i'm going with that too and because it will be emission it will automatically become a lot more lightened so now we're going to be adding a mix rgb node and added the color ramp over here uh, gradient texture separate XYZ a mapping node a value node a texture coordinate node and a Oh, sorry, not noise. Voronoi texture and brick texture. Okay, so change the uh, height and width of brick texture to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for both of them. Then plug in the brick texture into the color ramp. Plug in, uh, change the Voronoi from 3D to 4D, from F1 to F2, and the addition or whatever it's called to. Um, whatever this is called i actually don't have this isn't my first language i think everyone knows by that by now so you know um plug this into distance I change the value node to be two and plug it into the scale and a uh, mapping node into the uh, vector of the Voronoi texture and into this uh, separate xyz the z into the uh, gradient texture and the color into the lower part of the mixture RGB and brick shaders into the upper part, the object into the vector, and uh, over here it's going to be MTA, MTA, big for empty Agumon. Okay, so um, let's see now. This is actually going to be somewhat your final node setup. Final node setup. So let me just uh, check in rendered view. Yes, now it seems to be working right. So, if I start moving downward, yes, it starts disappearing. So, it's now starting to work properly. Okay, but obviously, in the start of the animation, um, Agumon wasn't shining. So, that's actually controlled by let's go into shading tab because um, this is what we're going to be needing now. So, I'll click on Agumon. When we actually move this part, Agumon actually changes from shining to regular part, so we also have to keep him this uh, color ramp. So let's get started. We're going to be needing the timeline for this one, and we'll uh, add another shade and add another timeline. We're also going to be needing uh, this part over here. So on frame one, Agumon is su supposed to be shining, and it's supposed to go through one uh, one rotation uh, without um, actually shining. So the uh, color ramp. Uh, position for this uh, black uh, black I don't know what this thing is called but black uh, add a keyframe over here I okay and click on this uh, square as well and click on I for its location to add another keyframe for both of them okay so now we're going to go into frame number 24 okay Agumon has completed one rotation and click on I over here again because we don't want this color ramp to move again uh, for now I again but uh, yeah and click this and click on I again again we don't, we don't want both of them to move so now in the second rotation uh, Agumon is start, going to start shining so about frame thir 30 or something okay wait I think I made a mistake G is there to move it above actually and then I okay so it should be a little bit of above for now so above about frame 30 Agumon should start shining so move it back and now Agumon is shining click on I again and about for frame 48 we actually want this box to be down GZ to move down completely and I'll click on oh I'll click on I on its position again. So now we should have our animation for first 48 frames. Let's start and see it from the camera view. Okay, so it's working well. Agumon should not be shining the start, then uh, after one second should start shining and then disappear because of the uh, movement of the cube. So on frame 48, Agumon's job is done. We're done with Agumon's part, and now we're going to be starting uh, working with uh, Greymon. So let's bring in the Greymon model. So click on the Agumon model first. We're going to be copying uh, Shader and uh, we're going to be copying its uh, 
node setup right click and then copy click on Graymon and I'll just move it down over here and then click paste paste it over here okay so now um, we're going to be needing this huge saturation node in the center over here rather than um, over there so plug in this texture to hue saturation node okay because we actually need a gray mons node to be working that way and um, this principal bsgf should replace wherever this principal bsgf is okay so um, yeah so i'll move this node and start replacing the old principal bsgf with this principal bsgf because it's actually the texture for gray mons so now we can actually delete this and now we have replaced uh, a gumon's uh, texture with gray uh, we have actually edited it and um, change this empty to empty g because uh, for Greymon. okay so now let's go into shading so Greymon is visible but it's uh, this when i move this circle oh yes i actually forgot we have to move this node over here for it to start taking taking some of Oh, I actually forgot. We uh, have to also change the blend mode for gray mode to alpha clip and uh, shadow mode to alpha clip as well. And let's just move it this downward a little bit. Oh, and I we also have to plug in this uh, mix shader into the surface because that's why it's not affecting it. Oh my god. Okay, so now that it's, it's invisible. Um, let me select the circle one, G is that to move it above and you can see it's starting to work again. Okay. So now um, let's bring the timeline back. So we'll start from frame 48 and um, the circular thing. So select the circle thing, the gray one's empty circle thing and um, add a keyframe on its location, I on frame 48 and on frame 72 it should have made gray one completely visible. So on frame 72 we're going to make G is that and moving it above okay and then click on i to add a keyframe then click on gray mon until frame 72 it's a color ramp over here this one it should actually be in the same position so while having the slider or in at this part on this position click on i and on frame 84 i'll move the slider over here and now gray mon is back to its texture form and click on i again Okay, as you can see, the color ramp is changing its gray one's color. So we're actually done with their uh, the shader part. Mm, let me just go back into 3D viewport, and now we'll actually see how the first part looks, uh, how it looks like. So Agumon shines and disappears, gray one appears, and it gets its cover colors back. So gray one, when we're still not done with gray one animation, obviously, go back to frame 48. 48, go back into solid mode. Um, I'll actually create in another collection. Um, I guess on collection number two, we're going to be adding a few things. So Shift A, Force Field, Force, G, Z, and move it downward, and give it a strength of 10, only actually 20. I guess 20 will work better. And then Shift A, uh, Force Field, Turbulence, G, Z, and give it a strength of 20 as well okay now um, we're going to be adding another thing shift a mesh circle okay and then scale it out and tab and right click and subdivide 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 until yeah it actually looks like this uh, full on line okay so the thing we're going to be doing is that this circle is going to be uh, uh, making the particles appear along Greymon's body the thing is uh, we can actually use a complicated method to uh, make them appear more practically more better lookingly but the thing is that method is actually really tough and uh, time consuming it also requires a little bit of uh, high fall models so this is actually a quick and dirty method 
so um, I think this method is more dirty, quick, dirty, and easy, and it actually gives good enough results. So I think uh, that's good enough for now. Now and then click on Shift A, Mesh, Icosphere. Let's uh, change the subdivisions to one, and give it the Icosphere uh, material. The material should be emission. Let's just give it a strength of 20, and I'll give it an orangish type of color, and then G Z to move it downwards uh, to the point where it's not visible in the camera. Camera. Uh, so, oh yeah, I speak of, of camera. Um, I guess uh, camera's position should also be changing. At this point, since we know Agumon just disappeared and Greymon is also not present, the camera's position is okay for this position uh, till frame 48. It should have the same very same position. So click on its location I to add in a keyframe. So now when we start moving till frame 72, it should be able to see Greymon completely. So we're going to be uh, moving backward and moving above so that Greymon is easily visible. Okay. And then click on I again. So now gray one is visible. So on frame 48 again, we'll go back and go to start mode. So now click on this uh, circle. Give it a particle system. Okay, emitter uh, number should be I guess thousand. I guess if you want to uh, a lifetime 30, lifetime randomized completely. Start frame will be 48 since, since gray one starts appearing from that point on. So 48 and end time is going to be 72 since uh, gray one is completely evolved at that point. Okay, and source. This is the most important part. Instead of faces, it's going to be vertices. Okay, vertices. Uh, render as halo. Instead of halo, it's going to be an object. Uh, the instance object is going to be icosphere. Uh, and uh, scale randomize, I guess. And I guess scale is going to be 0 0.08 or some other random value that you think is working well. Field weights remove gravity completely. So um, yeah. Okay, so the next step is while having the circle structured, we're going to add in a modifier, and that modifier is going to be called a string cram modifier. And the target is going to be the uh, Greymon model. Okay, so now it's attaching it, but it's reaching for its tail. So we're going to G Z and move it downward so that it actually starts from its feet. Okay, so now it's actually starting from feet, and its origin is down over here. So it, yeah, so, so let's just click on over here and then. So while still having the circle selected, the particles one go into its um, location and click on I to add in a keyframe until frame 72 G Z and move it above. Wait, um, oh yeah, G Z and move it above to the point where it's only hanging on in, on its horns. Okay, and then click on I again. So now let me just play it for you guys. So I guess that's that. Um, yeah. So this is basically the fact. I don't know why the string trap modifier is starting to act up like this, uh, but this is basically how I did it, and it actually worked fine in that one. So I hope you guys learned something today. Please leave a like, share, subscribe to a friend, uh, ask a friend to subscribe to the channel, support me, and um, yeah, I'll keep creating tutorials. As you know, my routine is a little bit more tough, so that's why tutorials are sort of infrequent. So please subscribe and goodbye.